today's CRM for Oil and Gas webinar featuring user adaption and training. My name is Christina Felchlin, Support Manager at Ledgeview Partners. Today we're going to talk about user adaption. We have 14 tips in no particular order on how to gain user adaption with your CRM. We encourage you to try out one or two of these tips to help you and your colleagues. Then Michael will let you know about some exciting training webinars in early August. We are currently working hard putting together just the right training topics to help you with CRM needs. Michael is going to give a quick update about the Microsoft uh, CRM Dynamics 2016 Update 1. We'll then go over the user submitted questions and we'll close the webinar with upcoming webinars. To ensure the best audio quality for all attendees, we have everyone in listen-only mode. If you have a question, please submit those in the question pane of your GoToWebinar control panel. If time, we will answer during today's session. <clears throat> if time does not allow, we promise to follow up offline. With all webinars we host at Ledgeview, today's webinar is being recorded and will be available on demand after the live session. All registered attendees will receive an email this afternoon with an access link to the recording as well as the presentation slides. You will also find the registration info for the upcoming training session, so please check those out. Now let's hear about some user adaption best practices from Michael Dodd, Support Consultant at Ledgeview Partners. Thank you, Christina, for that great introduction. As she said, we've got 14 great tips and tricks. So like Pokemon Go, let's catch them all. So to focus on user adoption, we're actually going to go on and start with focusing on user adoption from the start. The reason why that's so important is because once CRM is rolled out, it's actually too late to start user adoption. You really want to make sure that you focus on user adoption before it's implemented. Get everyone excited about the new upcoming features of the new CRM system, how it's going to enhance and increase their efficiencies. Really get them bought into it before you even go live. That way they're ready to jump in and excited to use all the new features. Items two and three here define expectations and set measurable goals. Those really go hand in hand um, because as a user of CRM and as an employee, you really want to make sure you understand the expectations. So in CRM, understanding the expectations of what you need to be doing in CRM and having measurable goals to achieve those so you know you're hitting your expectations is a great thing for users to have. And another awesome thing about CRM is those measurable goals. As a sales manager, you can actually set up a dashboard to see how your users are doing towards those measurable goals. And as a user, you can also have a dashboard that shows, okay, how am I doing this week in terms of getting to my number of activities that I need to get to? You know, am I on track? Am I ahead of schedule? Or do I really need to pick it up? Really gives them a way to see how they're doing and gives them great buy-in. See continual feedback. Your users, the users of CRM, they're in the trenches selling on a day-to-day -day basis, really using the system, getting into the guts of the system. So getting feedback from them on what works, what doesn't work for them, their must-haves and their wants can really, really help drive user adoption because they feel like they have buy-in. They have support from their management team, from um, other users and also from Ledgeview partners by giving us that feedback um, they can go on our enhancement list where Steve Rybrock can follow up with you and potentially be an enhancement later down the road so that's a great thing about continual feedback and really helps the buy-in and user adoption encourage buy-in from all levels of management from your salespeople all the way up to your CEO. Everybody needs to be bought into CRM and how it's going to help um, your team succeed, your company succeed. And understanding how CRM affects management, um, how the user's role affects management, and also how management's role and what they do in CRM affects the user. So having that cross-functionality and understanding how each, each team works and how each one affects the other is a really great way and it really encourages user adoption as well. Enhanced features. Um, as you know, um, Steve Rybrock and his team do an excellent job of getting um, excellent updates released um, at least a couple of times a year um, with new product features, new enhancements uh, that can really help to drive 
um, from that feedback that we get from customers. And that also helps user adoption because they're seeing their voice heard. But also Microsoft does some, roll, um, some rollouts as well in terms of upgrades. So upgrading the system, being on the newest platform that's available for CRM for the oil and gas product is very important. Um, and in fact, we have one coming up that I will touch on later today. So we'll draw, enhancing those features will also increase user adoption because this system is always progressing. It's always making the job easier for the user, which will make them want to use the system more. Introduce technology in phases. Part of that is the enhancements. We do enhancements, again, a few times a year, so we introduce new technology. And by the time that the users have mastered it, we're usually rolling out a new set of technology, new enhancements. So that's rolling out in phases. But it also comes when you start with CRM, when you first roll out to it. A lot of users want to focus on the meat and potatoes of it, which is the sales process, the lead account opportunities and contacts. And maybe once they get comfortable in that, they move on to advanced find, look at dashboards, reports, go into the station management and equipment tracking. So not bombarding and overwhelming your users right away, getting them used to a section and then ro roll out or introduce a new section to them can really help with buy-in and adoption because they feel comfortable and they're eager to learn the new stuff because they feel comfortable with what they were doing instead of just throwing it all at them at once. Make CRM your one-stop shop. Now I know all of our marketers have an ERP back office system but it's great because of that data load. We're actually pulling data from that back office system into CRM. So it really becomes a one-stop shop for the sales team. They can go into the into CRM, get all the information they need to know, understand the order history, understand where the customer is to help drive their sales. So make it a one-stop shop instead of having to go to multiple different places. They only have to go to one. And personally, I can speak to this. When I was a salesperson um, back in a former life, one thing that was really important to me was not having to go to different places to get different pieces of information. That was always frustrating. Keep it clean. One thing that I know Steve Rybrock stresses is getting clean data into CRM right off the bat. Um, and so that's one part of the hurdle. The second part is keeping that data clean. So instructing your users and, and with training, forming them to put in clean, important information into CRM instead of having to sift through data that's not important, um, accounts that aren't being used anymore, aren't purchasing, or contacts that are no longer with the company. So keeping the data clean will really help user adoption because it doesn't take them long to sift through uh, basically dirty data. Clean data helps them get their job done more efficiently. Follow up consistently with your users. And that's not just seeking continual feedback. Following up with them can be including a CRM portion of each sales meeting, a quarterly team meeting. So talking about you know, tips and tricks and best practices of your users utilizing it. Making CRM a forefront of your discussion and also that will lead to your users understanding, okay, this is what my management team is doing and how that affects me. And then management teams understand, wow, they're really doing some great, great things within CRM. And this is how I take that information. So having that collaborative nature and understanding how each person works drives that user adoption and it can be very important. Going mobile, as we all know in today's world, we're very mobile, we're all, doing different things. We all need to access our data uh, and do our jobs on the road and at all times of the day. So going mobile is a huge force of driving user adoption. If you don't have that mobile ability, chances are you're looking for some, some way to be able to do it. And I know a lot of you use the iPad app and it's a fantastic feature that our development team rolled out. And I know back when I was a salesperson, one thing I would have loved to be able to do is to take take that information, look at the customer I'm going to talk to on a sales call right before I went in, so it's, all that data is fresh in my head, and then any notes that I had from the customer, I could enter right away, not have to wait to get back to the office. And also a great thing, customers really want to know how connected their mobile sales team are to the home office. With the iPad app, you're really showing I am connected. 
And so that drives user adoption. That iPad app can really help drive user adoption because it's getting your mobile sales team connected and getting that information in front of them. And then it will really drive them to put good information into CRM and utilize it. Refine and reward. We all know the carrot and stick methodology. You know, carrot always wins out. You know, you catch more flies with honey. So in the beginning portion of user adoption and using the system, um, giving the giving your users an incentive as to why they should use the system. So you know, setting up a contest um, with activities, for instance, because I know that's a big part of our oil and gas um, sales teams. Um, saying you need to hit 25 um, activities, but if you exceed it and get to 30 for for this week or this month, you're going to be entered into a contest to win, you know, a $5 gift card. That can really help push them and make sure they're entering clean data, um, drives them to use the system. So using that reward um, methodology can really help drive user adoption, especially in the beginning. User adoption is never complete. I know a lot of marketers that are on the phone today have been with um, Legendary Partners in the oil and gas product since it came since it came about. And one thing we definitely appreciate that, but the reason why it works for you also is because you're driving that user adoption. It's it's important to you and making sure that your peop your salespeople and your sales managers are utilizing the system. Never stop that because as soon as you start stop making user adoption a key and the forefront of your business, you stop seeing those efficiencies. You stop seeing the results of what CRM can give you. Identify a CRM power user. This is a little bit of a newer concept, but one that I'm a big fan of. Um, a, a power user can simply be someone who's a rock star as a salesperson or somebody who adapts to change in technology very quickly within your team. And they can be a focus point in terms of being that power user, understanding the system better than anyone else, and utilizing that system to help get great sales. Other users can go to them and go, how are you using this? Um, what's making you so successful? It gives them a chance to learn about the system from someone who's in it day to day and understands the company. We here at the support team are always happy to help you no matter what, but sometimes it's really great hearing the information from inside power user because they know the position, they know the company. And that can really get buy-in from your other users because they're seeing that success from someone within. One thing I'd like to stress is that those 14 um, tips and tricks those are fantastic things. And if you put them at the forefront of your business and you're really hammering home on them, that's fantastic. But the key driver to make user adoption complete is training. Making sure you train them on the system. They understand the system. So those user adoption practices do take hold and do take effect. So don't spend all that time on user adoption and then fall short on training. Make sure your existing users and new users really know how to use the system. And again, we here at Leslie Partners are always happy to help. In fact, um, we're going to be holding two live training webinars that are going to be interactive. We're going to have a general user uh, that's going to be hosted by Josh Phillips on Wednesday, August 3rd, between 10.30 a.m. and 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then we'll be doing one for sales managers. And that will be held Wednesday, August 10th, between 10.30 a.m. and 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I will be hosting that event. I'm really excited about these live training webinars. I think they're going to do a great thing for the users and sales managers of our fantastic oil and gas customers. And we're really excited to see you there. Another great new thing that we're doing is a new hire email campaign. campaign and we're doing this in the fall. We're all new hires, and that's going to be identified by new users that you submit to us that we see as new hires. They're going to receive a weekly email from Ledgeview. And there's going to be links to videos and documents. They're going to train them on key CRM features. Fantastic, fantastic thing that our um, marketing and support team are putting together because I think it's really going to help your new users get onboarded and understand the system fast. We do have an upcoming upgrade to Dynamics 2016 Update 1. 
This is going to occur on Tuesday, August 2nd, after hours. It's going to be 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, and it's going to take, it's a 12-hour process, so it'll end the next morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So there will be a little bit of catches at the end of, you know, maybe East Coast people coming in, but that's when you'll see those changes take effect that next morning. There's going to be minimal noticeable changes. Um, it's that not really anything with major with navigation or any entities. It's more behind the scenes items. You may see a welcome message or a, a guided tour message. You can simply bypass these by clicking the X or the no thanks button. The current CRM Outlook client version, I know when we went to 2016, a lot, a lot of users needed to upgrade from the 2013 version to the 2015 or 16 version of the Outlook client. As long as your CRM uh, Outlook client is working today on 2016, it will, will work on update one. No need to upgrade. Same thing with the email router. Um, it will still remain compatible. That's all we have for our highlighted topic today of user adoption and training. Next, I'm going to go into our user questions. So our first question is, how do I print or save a quote to a PDF? When you are in a quote, there's going to be three dots on the on the end of the ribbon, and it's going to be that's called an overflow menu. And partway down, there's going to be a run report. And then when you click there, it'll be a quote print button. Once you click that, it'll bring up your quote. And from there, you have the ability to print or save as a PDF. To save it as a PDF, simply click the, the disk icon, the save icon. It'll give you a drop down. And if you click Acrobat PDF file, that will allow you to make that save as PDF. Our next question is when you select to track a message in Outlook, do all subsequent messages, so received and sent, from within that conversation also get tracked? Or is it a manual process where you select to track each message individually? So that's a fantastic question. And what our user is really looking for is um, what's called an auto track feature. And that's something that um, your support team here at Lesview Partners can help you configure as there's a few different areas to enable this. All subsequent emails are tracked. So once you track one email, all the other sent and received emails will be tracked. One thing to note, this feature does only work 80 to 90% of the time in a perfect environment. Um, this is the information we, we have gained in our research of this technology. And if you are on an email router, so not utilizing server-side synchronization, this can only be done through a forward mailbox. Again, something us here at um, support team at Ledgeview Partners can help you set up. If you decide that you'd like to move forward with this technology, highly recommend turning on a smart matching and tracking token. Tracking token really puts like a, a four to five digit number at the end of the subject line within your email. That will allow it to kind of catch it when new emails come in to help it track. Myself and us here at Ledview Partners and our support team, we highly recommend that you manually hit the track and set regard button because of the um, percentage of this feature working. Highly recommend manually hitting that, especially on the last email chain of the day. So whether if your customer sent you one or you sent one to your customer, if you track or set regard that email, it will pull that email and all the chains within that one email message into CRM as one activity. Our next question is, how do I set up a user dashboard for a team member in sales? That's a fantastic question. I recommend creating one dashboard, and that one dashboard can be utilized by each salesperson. Now, I know what you might be thinking. This sounds like it's not going to be unique or specific to that employee. It actually will. And the way we can make that unique to each salesperson is by utilizing what's called an owner equals current user filter. So, for example, if you're looking for the last, for leads created in the last seven days and you want that specific to each employee, all you have to do is set the owner to equal current user. Then any person who logs in, so if I log in, I'm going to see all my leads that were created in the last seven days. If Tyler logs in, he's going to see all his leads created in the last seven days. Same thing for Christina. 
So regardless of the information in your dashboard, you can utilize one dashboard for the entire team. So you create the subsequent views and charts and then load those onto the dashboard and do that by going into the, that's something that we can do for you. You would do it through the customization section. Does an account that is deactivated go back to being a lead? Can an account be moved back into a lead? An account cannot go directly back to a lead. Um, there's not a button that just takes an account, disables it, and reactivates the, the lead. The workaround to do this is that you deactivate the account. So this sets the status to inactive for that account. Recommend closing the opportunity that was created for the lead. Close it is lost. You can delete the opportunity. However, if you do that, all information will be gone. And then deactivate the contact that was created from the lead. So when you qualify a lead, an account, contact, and opportunity are created. So you want to make sure you get rid of those first. Then go back to the qualified lead and click reactivate. That way it's back to um, an open lead. The other option is to simply follow all the previous steps. Instead of reactivating the lead, just create a new one if any information has changed. I recommend still reactivating the lead because all your original information is still included. Our next question is, since I input opportunities and share a wallet for some of our sales reps, it would be helpful to understand the process of creating a new opportunity or share of wallet and why we would choose one over the other. That's a great question. I'm going to clarify this a little bit. It is very important to create a competitor share of wallet first. And the reason for that is because it's going to capture the actual competitor, the department that that competitor is working in and um, having business for. And then it's also going to grab the product segment, your gross profit, your revenue, and volume the competitor is gaining for your customer. Again, these are conversations you're going to need to have for your customer, but it's a place to grab this information. And as you can see here on the right hand side, this is once you hit add share of wallet competitor, this is what the form that will pop up. So this is where you'll put the information in. If you don't know it or can't get it from the customer, simply put zero in the revenue section. Since the or or the gross profit or volume. Once you click add competitor, this will add the information to a graphical information under the share of wallet. So as you can see down here, if we own part of the lubricants department, grease product segment, if we own part of that business, but the competitor also owns another section of it, then we know what share of the wallet we have versus what share of the wallet they have. And that tells us what we can earn from the customer. And in fact, if you feel while you're talking to the customer that you can win that business, so you can see here on the right hand side this new opportunity, if you check mark that box, and then click Add Competitor, it's going to create a new opportunity for you. It's going to add all this information in here. So the department, product segment, competitor, revenue, gross profit, and volume. It's going to add all that right to your opportunity. You're not going to have to repeat it. It's going to really capture that information. Obviously, if you don't have, there's no competitor that's, that has the business, you don't need to put this information in. And that's usually going to be the case on you know, extenuating circumstances, but also if they're not buying the business today from anyone else. And then you can just create a new opportunity and not have to worry about the share wallet competitor. Our next question is I see that when I create a new opportunity, a CRM only account gets created. However, I do not understand why the CRM only account stays in the system when I delete an opportunity. It would be helpful if you went over the reason why that a CRM only account gets created and what happens to it as the opportunity is opened, closed, or deleted. So I'm going to go through some information and I'm going to show you a little bit of a demonstration. So when an account is created, the account number will be CRM only account. An opportunity creation will not trigger an account to be created. And that's because you actually are creating an, an account or if you're not opportunity section, you're creating an opportunity. There's a parental relationship between opportunity and account. So when an opportunity is deleted, the account remains because the account is the parent. 
but when you delete an account, an opportunity will be deleted and any subsequent child records. I'm going to show you a little bit of a demonstration here next. So if we start with an account, we create an account, and it's here to stay. Then we created a contact. That's also considered a child record of an account because they're associated. Next, we create an opportunity. That, again, is associated just like a contact to the account. Now, if we delete the opportunity, our opportunity is gone. However, if we delete the account, this is what will happen. All information goes away because contact and opportunity are a child of account. So when you delete that account, all the information goes away. That's one of the main reasons why we highly recommend deactivating versus deleting. Our next question I'm actually going to go through and demonstrate. So this information down below is a walkthrough that you can utilize later on once we send out the PowerPoint information. Our question is, I recently had to perform a mail merge out of CRM for envelopes. Can you go over how to set up a mail merge? One key thing to note is that in the Outlook client is the only spot that you can do a mail merge. So you want to make sure you have the Outlook client installed and that is what you and, and that's what you utilize to do the mail merge. So I'm going to open up our Outlook client here and then I will pull that right on over to our system. And the reason why is because the Outlook client is connected with the um, is connected with the mail merge. I apologize, it's just taking a minute for this to pop up, and then I will go ahead and move this right on over. So as you can see here, the way to get to your Outlook client, a, a nice shortcut here is where mine says energy training, it may say, it will say your marketer name. In our circumstance, it says energy training. For our demonstration, I'm going to go into contacts, and that's what we're going to create our mail merge off of. So if you select your view, in this case, I'm going to stick with my active accounts. There's a couple different ways you can do this. You can select specific records by holding control and clicking the various records you'd like to use. Or you can just leave it blank. Whichever one you choose, you want to make sure you go to click the Add tab and click Mail Merge. Once you click Mail Merge, this screen will pop up and it's going to give you the mail merge type to choose. In our circumstance, or excuse me, in our scenario, we're going to go with envelope. You can start with an existing template, so an organization mail merge template or a personal mail merge template. In our case, we're going to go with a blank document. Now you get to choose which records you merge. If you remember, we highlighted a bunch of these, as you can see here in gray on the behind screen. I can select those records, or I can choose all records on the current page, or if I have multiple pages, all records on all pages. I'm going to stick with the records on the current page that I highlighted. And you can choose and edit your data fields. There are 62 data fields that you can utilize in a mail merge. However, two of those have to be utilized by the owner field and what's called a primary key. That's a behind the scenes thing for CRM. So really there's 60 different um, items that you can, data fields that you can set. And you simply click here, click data fields, and it's gonna look like the adding columns section of an advanced find. So you can look at the related records, related entities through here, or you can click the fields directly from the context screen. Okay, once you have yours selected, you click download and you can see here it's going to say your selected field is 37 so if you click download it's going to open up a word document and this just gives you the chance to review your mail merge recipients just to make sure everything that is everything is correct if everything looks good click OK it's going to finish loading it's going to allow me to choose my envelope size and options I'm going to click OK. Now down here in the bottom right, step one of four. This, these are the steps that you're going to follow. So it says next, arrange your envelope. So I've done, I've chosen my printing options. I've chosen my envelope options. I click OK. 
Now our next one is to preview your envelope. So actually you can choose to arrange your envelope. So if you choose address block, so if I want to do Mr. Josh Randall, if I want to set up my, my address block like this, I click that information, I click OK. So it's going to include an address block. You can do a greeting line. That will put the information here. So if you want to put dear, again, probably not for an envelope, you will want to do that. Electronic postage. And then there's various other items. So you can choose to insert on a case-by-case -case basis for different merge fields. So then we'll click Next, and we're going to preview. So as we can see here, it's Barry Smithwick, and he's with 5B Company, and this is his address. Okay. And again, we can put additional information here in the middle of the screen. If you chose to do that in the previous step, then to complete the merge, you just click Next. This is going to complete our mail merge. And one really great thing is you can upload this as a template to CRM if you do that by clicking here. Or you can edit individual templates. Or you can simply print it. And you can always edit your mail, um, your mail merge template <coughs> right from CRM. And you can do that by going to Settings, Templates, Mail Merge Templates. All right. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for the great content. Some resources. Steve Raybrock, our CRM product consultant, has created some great videos that highlight each of the CRM for oil and gas features. As you can see in the screenshot, we have quite a few videos, and many range from 7 to 17 minutes. So if you're ever curious to learn about a specific topic while you're in CRM, you can navigate to Workplace, then select Videos, and scroll to find the video you're interested in. Steve also has great documentation with screenshots. So if you'd like, if you'd rather read about it, we have those resources in that format as well. You just go to the workplace and then select documents instead of videos. Another great resource is your LedgeView support team. If you run into an error or have a question or issue, feel free to reach out to the support team at CRM support at ledgeviewpartners.com or 920-560-6888. Like Michael mentioned, we'll be conducting two user trainings in August. One will focus on general user and the other on sales managers. We highly encourage all users to attend one of these sessions. Please provide questions at registration so we can prepare training examples and demos. For our next CRM for oil and gas user group webinar, that'll be Thursday, August 18th at noon central time. At this time, we are planning to focus focus the webinar on Dashboard 97, but based on the training in early August, we'll finalize that topic after. Um, your feedback and questions will give us a better idea of what we'll need to focus on. Then on Thursday, July 28th, you can join us for five strategies to better segment your current lead database. <clears throat> and then all webinars are being recorded and available on demand. If you register after the live webinar date, you will immediately have access to the on-demand recording. On behalf of of the oil and gas product team, Michael and I at Ledgeview Partners, we'd like to thank you for spending time with us today. We hope you have a great day.